This lecture covers runoff curve numbers. So an introduction, what is, what is the purpose? It was developed by the Soil Conservation Service. It's an index that represents hydrologic soil group, land use, and land treatment. So first, let's talk about soil group classifications. Group A has a very low runoff potential. Soils have high infiltration rates. They're considered deep sands, deep loises, and aggregated silts. Loises are windblown sand or silts. Windblown silts. Group B is moderate infiltration rates. It's moderately deep sands, shallow loises, and sandy loams. Group C has slow infiltration, soils with a layer which impedes downward water movement. Moderate, fine to fine textures, clay loams, shallow sandy loams, low organic content, and soils high in clay. Group D has high runoff potential, slow infiltration, swells when wet, or has a clay pan or a clay layer preventing downward flows. If you're unfamiliar with the soil type in your area, assume group C. So how do you determine the soil group? As we discussed previously in class, based on a given soil profile, you can use the texture triangle. There is a texture triangle both in your textbook and in the handouts provided. Another method is based on a soils map, as shown below. If you know your watershed area, you can determine what your soil groups are. Next, you can use a website, such as the Web Soil Survey by the NRCS. Once you know your soils group, you need to determine your hydrologic condition. A hydrologic de condition describes your cover. Do you have poor soil cover, such that your land is heavily grazed or regularly burned, like what we see in Southern California all the time, where you have less than 50% of the ground surface protected by plants, bushes, or a tree canopy? Do you have fair, where moderate cover, 50 to 75% of the ground surface is protected? Or do you have good cover, heavy or dense cover with more than 75% of the surface covered. This is an important aspect in determining the curve number. If you're unsure of your hydrologic condition of your site, it is recommended that you assume fair. Next, what is the antecedent moisture content? The antecedent moisture content describes how much moisture is in the soil. Condition 1 are soils which are dry, but not to the wilting point to satisfy cultivation has taken place. Next, condition 2 is average condition, and condition 3 is heavily rained on or light rainfall has fallen, and the soil is quite saturated. In condition 1, usually, this is assumed for something between a 2 to a 10 year storm event. Con the average condition is something between the 25 to 50. And anything greater, greater than or equal to a 50 year event, we assume it to be condition three. So again, condition one is for two to 10 year storms. Condition two is usually for a 25 year storm or a storm less than a 50 year. And condition three is for storms greater than a 50 year storm. We'll descri describe what these storm frequency means next week when we discuss rainfall. If you refer to table 3.19, you can see how to adjust AMC values. All AMC values provided in the table in your text on, pay, on figure 3.18 are shown for AMC2. Thus, if you wanted to do an analysis for a 100-year storm, you will need to use table 3.9 to convert it. Next, how do you estimate the CN value? 
Table 3.18 is based on the following equation, where the curve number is based on a CNP times 1 minus F plus F times 98. The CNP vary based on soil groups, as shown in the table provided. The F is the fraction of imperviousness. If you refer to the table on page three on figure 3.18, you will see impervious values for your different sites. Next, you've got to remember watersheds are usually not homogeneous, are they? And since they're not, we need to calculate a curve number for a site. This can be done by calculating a composite curve number based on the following equation where the weighted curve number is a function of the summation of all the areas and the curve numbers for those areas divided by the total area. So if you have three different sites within a watershed, you'd have three distinct areas and three distinct curve numbers, and that will help you calculate an overall num curve number. To help you with this exercise, I'd like you to complete the following worksheet in your note packet. You need to calculate the curve number for both a 25 and 100 year storm event with the site that has the following land use characteristics. The soil has the following soil types. You can use the texture triangle to determine what soil type you have, and then you can use the curve number, you can use the curve number table in your textbook or in the note packets to determine your CN2 for the 25 year. You will need to do an adjustment for the 100 year. We will review this in class and discuss it further.